to the chest sound, to the core of the sound. It's not switching to falsetto, it's not switching, you know, the voice is intact, but it's, it's very much this side. Oh, 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 You know, I would say think of a pleasurable sexual encounter and think like you're moaning as you're singing. Oh. It's that attack and sigh. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. It's very soothing on the voice. If it's not soothing on the voice when you try it, then you're doing something wrong, which would be, I would imagine, tugging. Ah, 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 like really grunting. We don't want that. The number one thing that will tell you whether you're doing something right vocally or not is how it feels. It's that simple. If you're singing in an F and it doesn't feel good, uh, uh, then you're doing it wrong. Try something else. Be willing to make ugly sounds, please. Be willing to experiment with, with the most ridiculous or orthodox ways of phonating. All right, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, we are back in my dressing room. Um, we are on the fourth performance, I think, of Eugene Onegin. I lost count. Um, and um, we are going to be doing sort of a part two to a sort of vocal technique and warm up certain things that I have observed, experienced for myself, experimented on, so sort of my methodology. Uh, based on, I guess, the feedback, I uh, got a lot of messages from people with questions, um, a lot of uh, messages with people that wanted to hear similar content. And so I figured I'll just do a part two where I just go maybe a little bit more in depth. We'll see what we talk about um, depending on kind of where the conversation goes. If you haven't seen the first video that I made, uh, there's a link in the description and the video will probably pop up in this video somewhere in the corner. So what I wanted to begin with was going back to this sort of glottal attack exercise in order to achieve clear chord closure, right? Um, sort of this, ah, 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 ah. One of the tendencies when you start this workout is to be a little bit too abrasive with the chord closure. And you start to maybe push on the chords or tug, you know, using a lot of your neck muscles instead of a very simple glottal attack. This is not helpful. You know, if anything, it'll hurt you and it'll teach you habits of pushing and forcefulness. We don't want, ah, 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 that's not good. It should mimic what I would say a sigh. Ah, ah, ah. It could also be likened to like a, a pleasurable moan, you know? Um, Oh, 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 oh. The idea is to make sure that and, and understand that the chords are closing and then let them and then release the sound with the air. Um, it's not about maintaining them and forcing them closed. If anything, it would have the opposite effect. When we close our chords, they turn into a sphincter. And it's like when we lift weights, in order for us to lift heavy, we breathe in. And then you hear that sort of sound because we're closing and forcing shut our cords in order to maintain the entire pressure so that we can lift something heavy. That's not what we're trying to do here for singing, okay? It's the opposite effect. We're trying to close the cords and then release the sound. The air will maintain the cords close, okay? We just want to make sure that the attack, the first attack on the note, achieves chord closure. And then if the sound is really based on the air, sul fiato, then the chords will maintain closure. All I did was the first attack, the first millisecond, I did 
I made sure the cords were closed, and then I just released air. Ah! Now, releasing of the air, one of the great exercises I like to think about is, is making sure that the larynx is very free, right? A very free larynx, um, nothing that is compressed. We talked about that in the first video. Nothing that is compressed or fake dark or, you know. The larynx needs to be flexible. Under a certain range, the larynx needs to be flexible. Obviously, if the larynx is too high, ah, you strangle yourself and it's also a vocal crack, right? All a vocal crack is, it means that your larynx jumped up, switched registers and went down. It's kind of like a yodel. The larynx is jumping up, switching to a different register because it can't maintain the pressure and jumping back down. You know, a good exercise in releasing air, I actually like yodeling. So if you want to release air, I would suggest grab a comfortable note, maybe around here, C or D for tenor at least, and then start yodeling and ah, 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 ah. I start literally just moving the larynx around, wobbling it completely, so I realize that there's no tension here, there's no tug, there's no grabbing, all the sound is really coming out very easily. Um, and as far as the air, you know, it's really just a steady stream energy of air. We don't want to do breathe in and let all our air go, that's not what we want. We also don't want to breathe in and then let just a little bit of air go because then again we're doing that sort of sphincter Close, closing our cords and forcing them shut so that no air escapes. We want the air to escape, but we just want it to be an energized stream of air. When you do this, you'll see that naturally you're going to engage your abdominal muscles. I mean, I'm sitting down very laid back and I still feel them engaged. You know, if I get into my noble singing posture, really expand my ribs. Ooh, I definitely feel the support here. And I feel a control of that air. I could give more, I could take it back, I can play with it. And that's what we do when we're sustaining a sound. When we adapt it to the voice and singing, it's the same thing. It's the same idea. So going back to what I was talking about, this initial core closure should never be abrasive. It's to make sure that the attack is clear and the rest is released through air. You know, there's something called the Bernoulli's effect um, in which the speed of the air, the release of the air can bring a sort of suction, okay? And we know that the air goes through the vocal cord. So if we get something like these two pieces of paper, which honestly, I think this would work better if they were more like printing paper, but I have two tissues of paper, okay? If we blow on them, it will create a suction and bring these papers together. So if these two papers represented our vocal folds and we blow air into them, it would create a suction so as to bring them together. Just like that. I'm not putting these papers together. I'm literally keeping them apart purposefully and I'm just blowing air through them. And it brings them together because air, as it goes through, creates a suction. Okay, you can try this at home. Use printing paper better than tissue paper. The vocal cords adduct together in a very similar way, okay? We don't need to force them closed or shut. If we're forcing our vocal cords closed, it would have this sort of sensation. Uh, uh, a grunting sensation, which is not good. The glottal attack that I was mentioning before, ah! Uh, is literally just to make sure mentally that we understand how to close our cords. The air will eventually, as we release air and sing with air, just like these two pieces of paper came together, the air will maintain the vocal cords closed, vibrating but closing clearly, right? There's no such thing as closing our cords shut and that's it, done. Because there would be no sound coming out if that's the way. Obviously our vocal cords are opening and closing thousands of, of times per second. 
But the idea is that we don't want to have a fluttered sound. <laughs> yes, the chords are closing in that sound, but it's not clear closure. It's not optimal closure. It's not the closure that we would want for operatic singing and to resonate. I could go and sing, you know, Ora forti. It's very breathy, you could describe it. Very um, ingolato, because it is in the back of the throat. Uh, but it's, it's, there's not quite a pitch to that sound. There's no core. There's not what we, I would call steel to that sound. Squilo, brightness. So what we want really with this sort of optimal chord closure and this glottal attack is not to increase pressure or grunt or tug at it. It's merely to adduct the chords to get that clear squilo and core pitch of the sound and then release the air. And the chords will close naturally without effort, without pressure, just like the pieces of paper. Ah! Ah! to the chest sound, to the core of the sound. It's not switching to falsetto, it's not switching, you know, the voice is intact, but it's, it's very much this sigh. Oh, 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 You know, I would say think of a pleasurable sexual encounter and think like you're moaning as you're singing. Oh. It's that attack and sigh. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. It's very soothing on the voice. If it's not soothing on the voice when you try it, then you're doing something wrong, which would be, I would imagine, tugging. Ah, 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 like really grunting. We don't want that. Um, I would say that this exercise is also very head voice dominant. That's just merely to say that if you're feeling that tug or that grunt sensation, maybe just ease out a little bit and go more towards that sigh, that yawn, that head voice. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, and start from there. Maybe don't put any chest voice at all, falsetto. Ah, 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 ooh, ooh, ooh. And then little by little, add a little bit of chest voice because it just means that you're just shoving sound. Oh, you know what I mean? We don't want that. I think that a lot of what we do as singers is very instinctual, right? There are a lot of mechanisms and, and muscles that are working that we don't have control over. We call these involuntary muscles, right? I don't control my diaphragm. I can't, you know, stop it or move it or everything. The diaphragm moves as I inhale and exhale. What I have some control over are the abdominal musculature surrounding the diaphragm. Even the vocal cords themselves, I can't control every time they close and open and close, it's just something that happens as air is being released. This is all to say that there's just a lot of things happening that we don't have control over. We can only mitigate through instincts, through certain terminology that describes an idea or a concept that we can then perhaps put into the sound. So for example, if someone says to sing lighter, what does that mean to you? It could mean to you something different than it means to me. The terminology for singing in a, in a light manner could be completely different for a hundred different people. If I told you to sing darker, well, what does that mean? If I told you to sing brighter, if I told you to sing, you know, these are all terminologies that we use to describe an idea or a concept, okay? This can be very confusing, okay, at times, especially for younger singers. I know it was for me. I had a huge trauma as I moved from, you know, my early undergraduate to young artist programs. And I did young artist programs all over and I wanted to quit singing. You know, I remember very, very deeply um, some traumatic moments in my life where I honestly lost the passion for singing because I was so confused. And there were people putting a lot of pressure on me and I didn't know what to do because you have a coach telling you one thing, you have a voice teacher telling you another, the artistic director telling you one more thing, and they're all contradicting each other. 
and there's 10 or 20 different people giving their opinions and trying to teach you how to use your voice. And the problem was that you forget to listen to your own little instinctual voice. And one of the things that I've learned most is what really defines you as an artist when you get up on stage is your own voice, what you have to say, what your musicality and what your instincts have to say. And so I took a, I had to leave, you know, I took a big break from, from doing any sort of institutions and voice and just started studying on my own. And to this day, I haven't really gone back to a formal voice teacher. Because again, when you go to, you know, colleges and young artist programs and academies, they kind of throw voice teachers at you. You know what I mean? You don't have a say, you don't really get much time to do research whether this person is really the type of person that you trust and, 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 and you like what they have to say about the voice. No, it's kind of like, you're just going to study with this person, deal with it. Um, so I kind of, I left. I left, took a big break, and I started doing some self-teaching. It was a lot of soul searching and a lot of sort of listening again back to my little voice, my instinct, you know, what feels good. And that is the best advice or suggestion I can give to any of you that are starting out singing or trying to understand more technicalities about the voice, you know, of obviously do the studying, do the research. I had to do it alone for a long time. And that took a lot of discipline. Not a lot of people can just, you know, do it by themselves. A lot of people need a lot of hand holding and a teacher. But if you're someone who says, I can do the work, I will do the studying, I will do the research, I will try to understand the voice, then I would say absolutely try it, go for it. But the best thing I could tell you is to listen to your own instincts. The number one thing that will tell you whether you're doing something right vocally or not is how it feels. It's that simple. If you're singing an F and it doesn't feel good, uh, uh, then you're doing it wrong. Try something else. Be willing to make ugly sounds, please. Be willing to experiment with, with the most ridiculous or orthodox ways of phonating. That's what I did. I went in the shower and trust me, nobody would want to come between me and, and a thousand feet of that shower as I literally yelled and screamed like a goose and chicken, just trying to figure out what felt good, what felt release, what felt correct, you know, and what, what sound had the brightness, the resonance, the color, the warmth that I wanted. It was all like yodeling, cracking, experiment, allow yourself, you know. I would say to this day, yodeling and vocal cracking are one of the best things that ever happened to me when I allowed myself to just do it. I think we're always so self-conscious about, oh my God, I don't want to crack the voice. I don't want to, I don't want to sound like a crack. Crack. Do it. Because if anything, cracking means that the larynx was compressed too tightly and it just could not sustain the pressure of your neck muscles sustaining and just had to pop up. And that's where you get the uh, 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 and you get the yodel. I warm up sometimes with yodels. Ah, 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 sorry. Ah, it's literally like ah, it's literally flapping the larynx and understanding, okay, this sounds horrible, it sounds ugly, but I mean, I just sang it be flat and it cost me nothing. It was very released. Okay, so now let me get that sensation and bring it to actual pretty singing, you know, with the warmth and the color. And it's just, it's literally that. It's experimenting. It's trying new things um, and having a point of reference, okay? This is very important. If you can phonate in a manner that doesn't hurt you, doesn't cost you, it's very released, it's very easy, have that as a point of reference. Don't lose that. It doesn't matter if it's falsetto or just, you know, 100% head voice or and there's no chest. It doesn't matter. Forget about registers, forget everything. Just think about the phonation, you know? If you're trying to sing a G or an A flat and it's not coming out, try it in falsetto. Okay, that is easy. Can I apply, little by little, a little bit more core to the sound, a little bit more chest voice, without losing that sensation. Little by little, baby steps. You add 
gradually, like if you're turning the knob of, of like the volume, little by little. And if you feel like you went from to you're like, okay, too much. Go back to your reference point. Don't lose it. Go back to that sensation. Apply that to literally every single note from the bottom of your range to the top. And try to understand how can I achieve this connection to the core sound and so the sound is operatic. But it maintains that ease in the sound. Don't lose it. Don't lose what feels good. Don't lose your instinct. Go for it. Okay? Another thing I would say is some great workouts have to do with going from decrescendo to crescendo, back to decrescendo, when you can sort of shape the dynamics of a sound as you're sustaining a note, it means you have great control over it. Great control over the air, great control over the registers, you know. Try to see if you can go from a forte to a piano, to a forte to a piano, or backwards. Start piano to forte to piano to forte. This will help with also gradually increasing the chest voice, gradually adding the chest voice, the, the core sound, um, without feeling a tug or a weight or uh, you know, especially if you're always going back to your point of reference. Ooh, falsetto, very easy. Now let's let's give a little more and go to a forte. It's not easy, of course, it will take a lot of tries, but when you get it, you start to realize I can phonate in a in a way that feels like a falsetto. Feels like head voice, but it's not. Because it is connected. It's not disconnected, it's connected to the sound. And I can start singing the high notes in a way that doesn't feel like I'm strangling myself or lifting a hundred pounds. There's, there's an element of release, okay? So play with the glottal attacks, play with clear chord closure, play with freeing the larynx, <laughs> yodeling, <laughs> play with the yodeling, the freeing of the larynx, allow it to just move everywhere and crack and yodel. Ah, 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 ah. Stick the tongue, stick your tongue out, make sure there's no tongue tension or jaw tension. Ah, 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 ah. My larynx is really, literally just moving everywhere, but I realize I can still phone it with a loose, flexible larynx. And go for the easeness, okay? Go for your instinct. Go towards that reference point. If you don't have it, find it. Find that easy way of phonating and always try to phonate that way and keep growing and strengthening that sound. You know, the voice is a well-oiled machine and you have to realize that if one thing doesn't work, it's usually because something else is not working, you know? A very quick point about what is vocal technique, really? If anything, it is a foundation to allow you to sing consistently. Doesn't mean that it will make you sing perfect or great. Sometimes we wake up and we feel terrible. We could be sore, we could be sick. Vocal technique is literally just the way for you if you have a concert or you have a show that day that you could still get through it and sing okay and sing good because you can rely on it even though you're feeling terrible. So it allows you to be consistent. That's really what voice technique is. It's a foundation for you to rely on. If you're not feeling great, you can at least sound good. And if you're feeling great, you can sound fantastic, you know? But it's not a magical thing that will make you sing good. It's just a way for you to be secure and a consistent singer. A consistent singer will be casted and hired nine times out of 10 than a singer who does really great maybe one out of seven performances and then the other six are terrible. You know, a singer who doesn't really know what they're doing but they have maybe a great talent but they never built it or they never developed the technique. Now when it comes to the support, the apoggio, you know, I think a lot of people think that 
their sound doesn't work because of their support. You know, oh, I'm having trouble here. I feel tense. I feel weighty. I don't feel great here when I'm singing. It must be my support. What do I need to do? Do I need to stick my belly? Do I need to flex my abs? What am I supposed to do? I would say it's actually the opposite. Fix the sound and then you'll fix the support. Apoggio is something that we can do very naturally without having to have 10, 20 years of experience. We just need to understand it. And it's also something that we can all do. We're all born with it. It's not like opera singers develop a third lung or a second diaphragm. No, we all have the anatomy to be able to do support. When a baby comes out of the womb, the first thing they do is they start crying. And you can see that, you know, they breathe in, you can see the, the belly expansion, and then, and then that sound, that baby cry sound, will be more resonant than, than any orchestra you'll sound. It cuts through, and it's a natural thing. Now, did that baby study like 20 years of opera and singing? No, it didn't. It's just something that naturally does. And we can do that too. I would say, imagine that you're outside. Your wife or mother or friend, whatever, is about four blocks away and they're desperately looking for you and you see them, okay? Uh, it's a very crowded space, so you're on your phone. And you say, hey, mom, hey, come here, hey, come. You naturally are supporting a sound in order to project so that your mother, your friend, or whatever can hear you from four or five, six blocks away, okay? Did you study 20 years of opera to do that? No. You can naturally do it without thinking. Go outside and go, hey, ah, oh, oh, hey. You'll realize that your body is saying, oh, I'm trying to project the sound all the way over there. That means I need to support it over here. Go outside, put a hand here and literally go, hey, or have a friend go six blocks away and be like, hey, let me know if you can hear me. I'm gonna try to call you, okay? Hey, friend, James, come here. You'll realize that this is engaging. Singing is the same way. When we sing opera, it's like sustaining that sound, okay? Hey, James. Hey, James. Ah! It's not something that you need to flex, understand, breathe, stick your belly out. You breathe in, expand the ribs. You have that sustained moment when we're about to attack and... Hey! Ah! And it's just the resistance. You know, we can dive a little bit more deeper into a pojo later on. Maybe I'll do another video about it. But all this to say is, you know, guys, go back to what feels good. Go back to nature. Go back to your instincts. Um, this, you know, the whole tr Italian traditional school of singing is based around this. You know, Laudi Volpi said singing is like reciting, but not reciting as in a conversation. It's reciting in a theater aspect. You know, Romeo, Romeo, thou, or whatever it is. You know, I don't know Shakespeare, but um, but it's reciting in a sustained manner. It's recitar cantando, reciting in a singing manner. Okay, so it's ah. Uh, Ah, ah, ah. Now sing it. Ah, ah, ah. And all this comes from beginning from that point of reference where you can phonate in an easy way, in a loose way, in a released manner that has that chord closure. And as we talked in the previous video, where I talked about the extremes of the voice, the chiaro, the scuro, you know, be able to balance out those two colors of the voice where it's bright but warm, squillante but round, so it's not ah or oh. it has that perfect balance. Oh. It's like breathing, releasing air, exhale, oh. sigh. Well, I hope this helped a little bit again. Um, maybe clear out some things that I didn't say in the previous video. Um, as always, 
I am not a voice teacher. I am not your voice teacher. I am here to just share with the world my experiences, my observations, my methodology um, in singing, and always finding the most released, relaxed sound possible. Keep, keep studying, keep working on it, and never lose your voice, never lose your instincts, because that's what will define you as an artist. Until next time, ciao.